Today we're going to talk about a very important topic that's on many people's mind. How do I find God's will for my life? Wow, this is a big question and you need to have an answer and you probably need direction yourself. I just talked to someone about, uh, about dating and the person was getting into a more serious uh, 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 relationship with this individual and was asking, you know, how do I know if this is the right person? Because for believers, we don't want to make the wrong decision because we feel like if we make the wrong decision, perhaps God will not bless us fully. So this is important. How do we do it? Well, first I got to tell you something that I've noticed that for a lot of people, we sort of almost demand or believe that God will demonstratively show us the path we are to take at every important juncture in life, be it what school we go to or who we're to marry or where we're going to live or what job should we take. I'm not saying that God does not reveal at certain times a path we should go. But what I do want to say is that in Scripture, it's more important to obey God wherever you are than to have God show you the path you are going to take. It's a very different philosophy. Because if you demand that God show you, then what you're doing is basically, okay, uh, tell me, should I take this job? Should I take this job? Should I marry this job? Should I do this one? And what happens is that you fail to realize that God has given you the ability to make decisions based upon what you think is the best for your life. Now, I'm not saying you don't trust God. I'm saying that God has given you more authority and more wisdom to think than you think you have. One of the more interesting passages in the scripture is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, where after he creates uh, Adam, the first man, the first human being, God brings the animals to him to name. I always used to think how unspiritual that was, because if, if Adam was truly spiritual, he would, have did not, he would have refused to name the animals and perhaps pray about it to see what God first wanted the animals to be named. But God says, no, no, whatever you name them, that'll be their name. It's important because in the whole uh, 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 way in which God works, He gives us authority and because we are sort of like a... Uh, 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 given the authority to rule and to manage and to make decisions under the canopy of God's authority to us. Sometimes God will reveal something specific, but I believe about 80, 90 percent of the time, God will allow the decision to be made on our own, and that would be God's will. And that's very, very surprising. And it's very challenging for us. So let's say you have this aspect of marriage. Should I marry this person? Is it God's will? I'll tell you the most important indicator of this and how you make the decision is to think, is to pray, and also to see, well, is this the person really good? Is this person uh, fits the, uh, let's say, a virtuous person, a virtuous man, a virtuous woman? rather than to see whether this is the person that God has for me, so that if you choose that person, your life will be full of joy and happiness. It's not true. You make the best decision you can make, knowing the individual, and then you realize that the blessing of marriage and the happiness of marriage is not really based on who you choose but how you adapt to the changing situation in life the two of you have decided to embark upon. You see, it's not just the selection. It's the life choices you make, regardless of the selection you have made. So I hope this has helped you. We're going to deal with a lot more topics in the weeks to come.